the before and the after. This is our brand new bathroom floor. Heated flooring with limestone tiles on top. This has been a long and tedious process, but well worth it. Let's start from the beginning. Let me show you. I've got the demo done. Well, most of it. Okay, this floor is way too rough still for tile. We ripped out all the tile on this floor a few months back, but what we left was some thin set. Originally, I thought I got most of it, but there's a very thin layer left. And even a small amount of unevenness can really throw things off when setting tile. I've made that mistake before, but never again. That's looking a lot more even now, now for the cleanup. I don't know what I hate more, scraping thin set or cleaning up afterwards. In the past, I've tried wetting the thin set first, I've tried grinding the thin set, and for me, scraping's really the only answer. Now it's a long and tedious process, but in the end, you get nice smooth floors that are ready for tile. <sighs> this subfloor prep came out really good. The next step is gonna be installing all of our heated flooring. I'm gonna start with the Ditra. This holds all of the electrical wiring. I need to figure out the best orientation for this now. So for the heated flooring, we decided to go with Schluter Systems Ditra Heat. And we have both a large roll and individual mats. Okay, I don't wanna have any waste, so I think we need to write out a schematic. Yep, I think schematic's the only way. Luckily, I have Michelle for this one. This is gonna work good. Let's start cutting. Even though this is Ditra specifically for heated floors, it cuts the same, installs the same as any old Ditra. The only slight challenge it has is cutting holes for the drains like this. When cutting the size, I'm gonna leave minimal gaps between the wall and this curb. I'm also trying to line up the lugs of the mats as best as I can so the wire can run straight through with no kinks. This is gonna be a lovely one. Okay, this is gonna be the first of many thin set mixes. It's gonna be a lot of thin set. Since we're installing on top of a concrete subfloor, I'm gonna be using unmodified thin set mortar. Okay, I think I'm gonna let this thin set slake now, and then we'll start installing the Ditra. The one thing I've learned over time is always use the right trowel size, otherwise you won't get the appropriate coverage. I'm gonna be using a one quarter inch by one quarter inch square notch trowel and the thin set mixed up nice and wet. For me, this is a race against time because as the drier this thin set gets, the less sticky it is and the less coverage I'm getting. And that's why I pre-cut everything instead of cut as I go. Schluter recommends a 100% transfer of thin set to the back of the fleece on the Ditra mat. Keeping the thin set wet gets better results in the transfer of thin set. This isn't a hard step, but it is a critical step. Without good installation, the towel could crack later on down the road. Okay, just the shower pan, and then we're done. We're done with the Dietra part. Initially, we actually debated a little bit if it was worth putting heated floors into the shower, but why not? As long as this shit drains, I'm happy. As long as I get everything adhered down well, everything should be sloped towards the drain still. And we're done. Check for level and flatness, and everything looks really good. Okay, I have a feeling running the wiring is going to be a pain in the ass and we're not going to get it on the first try. We'll see. Before installing any of this wiring, I need to check for damage by checking in Schluter's numbers from the factory. So the resistance of the wires is in spec, but we have a couple more things to keep in mind. Next up is the planning stage. The wire needs to be run 3 inches from all walls, 2 inches from fixed cabinets, and 6 inches from floor drains. Other than that, we can run 323 or 33 stud spacing. Let's start the shower. Because we're going to be installing two separate runs, I think it's good to start at the shower because it's a shorter distance in the thermostat. Maybe we should take it up and do the 3-2 stud spacing. Because if we're halfway through, I don't know if we're going to be able to eat up the rest of it until it gets to the thermostat. I think we're going to have to play around with this a little bit. Okay, after a few attempts, I think we got it. 
Now for the second run, the entire rest of the floor. The reason it has to be done in two runs is just in case there's water damage to the first circuit in the shower. If there is damage to that first circuit in the shower, it won't affect the rest of the floors. And it looks like this second run is going to take some adjusting too. Okay, we'll try a different stud spacing because we're a little short. The nice thing about this system is you can adjust the stud spacing to release or eat up more wire. And it's the only way to adjust because these wires can't be cut. Hell yeah, we got it. That's all Michelle's planning. I think this looks good. Up next, waterproofing the shower, finally. All right, let's get this cream membrane on. Now, if you watched our Schluter waterproof shower system video, we didn't get to complete the waterproofing for the shower because of this stage. Well, we're finally here now. And that's the waterproofing for the shower. I'm super happy to be done with that. I hate leaving stages of the project undone. I think I'm gonna wrap up today with wiring up the thermostat. So wiring this up should be pretty straightforward. Good thing Michelle and I planned ahead for this and did all the prep work. Now this is a pain because we had to run a dedicated 20 amp circuit and we had a giant glue lamp in the way. Our electrical panel is in the garage and this glue lamp is taking up the entire space above the joists. Luckily we found a small hole in the glue lamp and we're able to fish a 12-2 Romex into the garage where our electrical box is. With our biggest problem solved, everything should go smoothly. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a minute. Oh shit. I forgot something. I was supposed to put conduit inside the wall. And now I have to open up this wall. Install a different junction box with conduit and run the wires up to the box from the floor. Even if I have to do things over, it's important to do things the right way. Sensors installed and we're back to square one. Honestly, I can't believe I forgot the conduit, but it's okay. We can do this patchwork down the road. Still install the flooring next. Okay, our tile's arrived, and this is a lot of tile. Let's get inside. Honestly, it feels really good to be here because it took us so long to select this tile. This is 18 by 18, 180 square feet, Turkish limestone. We finished off last night figuring out the layout for the entire bathroom. We also cleaned and sealed all the tiles. Because this is limestone, we're a little bit worried that it's gonna get thin set stuck to it because it absorbs a lot of water. In terms of the layout, we're gonna go 33% offset. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the first tile, mix up thin set, and then we'll get started. Okay, our starter tiles are cut. Let's mix up some thin set. For the Schluter system to work properly, I need to use the correct trowel size and thin set mortar. For this, it's going to be unmodified thin set and a half inch square notch trowel. We're going to start with the middle row. It's essential we get this square and straight. Since the tiles are so large, we're making sure we back butter each piece and use this tile leveling system. A tile leveling system is essential in reducing lippage. I think this is the last one and then we gotta mix up more thin set. I think we're gonna be going through this thin set fast. The towel leveling system is helping a lot but I'm also using a level to make sure everything is nice and flat. Last towel in this row, which is a cut.
Okay, first row's in, which is the most critical because we had to get it straight. I think everything else is gonna go faster now because we can thin set and install more than one towel at a time. With that first row locked in, I know everything else is gonna be square and straight. So far so good, keeping everything nice and clean. This will make cleanup later way easier. Day two, and I think we're gonna finish up today our goals are the same as yesterday. No thin set in the grout joints, keep everything clean, no lippage. We're gonna start off with some awkward cuts and then it's smooth sailing from there. Let's continue. So these awkward cuts go at the entrance to the toilet. This was the best possible scenario for the layout with the least small cuts at the ends. This one's gonna be a little tricky because it's a notch. On my tile saw, it can actually plunge cut. This plunge cut feature was money. I was able to avoid using an angle grinder here. This resulted in cleaner cuts. We're rolling now. With almost all the crazy cuts done, it's smooth sailing. We're getting there. Because of that half inch trowel size, we're only getting about eight towels down per bag of thin set. And this means I'm spending a lot of time mixing thin set. And now I got one other little slowdown. I need to cut circle holes in my towel for the bathtub and toilet drains. Now there's many ways to do this, but I think using an angle grinder is best. It takes a little practice, but I'm getting pretty good results. It doesn't have to be perfect because the toilet and the bathtub will cover it up. That was a long road. Last piece, and then we're done. We just have to wait 24 to 48 hours for the thin set to dry. And then we can remove the tile leveling system, clean and seal the tiles one more time, and then start grouting. Day three. To remove the tile leveling system, all I have to do is hit the sides of the rubber mallet. At least I thought. Shit, all these spacers are getting stuck. I've had spacers get stuck before and they're a pain to get out of the grout joints. I usually use a leveling system that clamps from the top, not from the inside. So these are breaking and can be a little bit more challenging to get off. Apparently this is common. We were looking on Amazon reviews and if a little thin set gets stuck on the tabs, they'll break off easily, plus they're kind of fragile. So what people are doing is clamping vice grips on there and then hitting the vice grips with a hammer. We'll see. We've got all the grout lines cleared out now, and even though this is a pain to remove at certain parts, I think it's one of the best lippage control systems on the market. Everything's really flat. We've got no lippage throughout. Final steps now, grouting. Let's get these floors wrapped up. For the grout, I'm gonna be using Mop A Flex Color CQ in the color almond. I'm gonna dampen the tile and then use a grout float to push the grout into the joints. I love this grout because it's pre-mixed and I don't have to worry about it drying or color consistency. For me, the most important thing is cleaning as I go. In the past, I made the mistake of letting some of the grout dry on top of the tile and it is a pain to get off once dry. Slow and steady, quality over speed. Well. Heated floors in, tile installed, grouting finished. We're wrapped up with these floors. Let's take a look. This has been a long time coming. Months of work and we finally see some payoff.
So that's our first finishing project. This limestone is Turkish limestone. That's why it's so uniform and even in color. We're really happy with the results. This was a hard choice for us picking the flooring. And we're ready to continue. We're ready to move forward with this bathroom. Our next project is gonna be filling this area right here, building a vanity. We're gonna build a vanity from scratch. We're back to woodworking. I can't wait to show you.